Hi folks, this is Darren with My RV Works. Today we're in Carlsborg, Washington. That's halfway between Squim and Port Angeles, closer to the Squim side. Um, we're working on a customer's coach today. Customer states he has no power to his coach. He can't run his slide room, refrigerator doesn't work, there's no lights, um, etc. Now if you look behind me right here, you'll notice that there's a display on that microwave. So uh, for a keen eye, if you know what you're looking for, the um, the fact that I have lights right there on my microwave, that means that my AC side of the circuit is working, but the DC side is not, okay? So I have not checked anything. I haven't broke out my meter. Basically, I, I grabbed my tool bag, um, got permission from the customer to make a video, and um, I grabbed the camera, threw on my little lavalier, and threw a light up above so I can y'all can see better because it's dark in here. It's dark in here because there's no power. And um, I figured, hey, let's let's bring you guys along and do a discovery as to why there is no power in this coach. Now, we do have power, we have AC power. What we don't have is a DC power, okay? And let me just take a moment and, and talk about that because the customer, uh, and, and I've got a broad audience and you're coming in from different backgrounds and things. Um, so let me, let me just mention this, and I, I wanna take a moment and talk about the difference between AC and DC in a coach because I have had this question several times before. Now I do have a whole nother video, I think it's 48 minutes long, where I do dive in pretty deeply into electricity, uh, how electricity works, et cetera, when we're actually replacing a service panel. So go look for that video on my playlist under electrical stuff. Um, that's probably where this video is gonna end up too on the playlist as well. So this will be a real abbreviated version. When you're plugged into shore power, the breaker, the, the, the shore power feeds the breaker box, okay? And that's the thing with all the big black switches in that box, or it's called a, a breaker box or a panel, a distribution panel or a panel board, or depending on the trade that you come from, they call them different things. Um, but those are those big breakers, okay? One might be a 30 amp breaker, or you might have two that are say 50 amps on them. Um, so that's AC shore power. That's gonna feed your receptacles. It will uh, feed your microwave. Um, gee, uh, your television, things like that. Those are the AC circuits. But another thing that that AC side is going to feed is, so basically your AC appliances. And one of your AC appliances is your battery converter, battery charger. That's an appliance, folks. Uh, just like your toaster, microwave, anything else. So your battery converter, battery charger is an appliance. And they do fail. It's important to think of it as an appliance because it needs to get plugged into shore power in order for it to work or generator, okay, or solar or whatever. Um, <clears throat> so the converter's job in this circuit, in it, the, the, the appliance, the converter appliance's job is to take that 120 volts AC and convert it to 12 volts DC, okay? Um, because that's your lights in your RV, that's your um, the refrigerator, your air conditioner, your furnace, and your water heater. They all have little brains on them, and those brains are 12 volt brains. So if you're, uh, and a lot of them stop at about 10.8 volts, okay? That's the volts, if you go to my other video, volts, think of volts as, as electron pressure in the wire, like we think of water pressure. In my other analogy, I use tire pressure because we, that makes sense to us, how much water pressure, how much tire pressure. Well, volts is like electron pressure in a wire. So when these control boards, uh, things like that, get to, I, I believe the number's 10.8, there's a couple different manufacturers. Sorry, I just bumped you. Um, when they get below 10.8, then they don't have enough electron pressure to do any work. And a lot of those boards just shut down. They won't work. Therefore, your refrigerator and all these things won't work. So there's that part. That is to say, even if you are on a, let's talk about refrigerator. Even if you're on AC shore power and you're wondering why your refrigerator doesn't work, it's because it, the refrigerator is required to have at least 10.8 or greater volts in order for that brain to work. Okay. So all the AC side is on your refrigerator is the heating element, but it's that 12 volt brain that is telling that heating element to turn on and off with the relay on the control board. Hope all that makes sense. Same with your air conditioner uh, right there. Um, the air conditioner needs 120 volts shore power to work, but it requires a 12 volt brain to tell it what to do. So um, there you go. Now, that I say that because there may be some confusion. I'm plugged in and my air conditioner doesn't work, you know, and I know it's a 120 volt appliance. <clears throat> I think I've answered that comment. Okay, so we've talked about, um, uh, let's talk about the converter just real briefly. Uh, the converter's job, like I mentioned, was to take 120 volts and convert it to 12, okay? Conversely, an inverter's job is to take 
12 volts and invert it back to 120. And that has to do with that sine wave, okay? We're going to either convert it to DC, which is a bunch of up loops or up bumps, if you will. And the inversion or the uh, uh, the sine wave for AC is, is the, the, the sine wave with the peaks and the troughs, things like that. So we're going to recreate those from 12 volts. 12 volts is just a bump, 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 bump on the top. AC has the alternating current. Okay. So we're going to, we're going to flip the half of, so, okay. Yeah, this works. This works. I'm looking at myself in the camera there. So, um, so this is AC sine wave. Okay. We're going to go up on this trough and then down on this one. And so when we convert it, we're going to flip this one up like that to make DC, which is direct current. And when we invert that, we're going to flip it back around. So it creates this sine wave again. Okay. Um, that's all I'm going to say on that. I, I can believe me, I can go on for another hour, but I won't, but that's inverting and converting. So we're going to invert the sine wave to invert it back down to the bottom and make it go like this. And we're going to convert it to flip it up to the top to just make it direct current push done there. That wasn't so bad. Customer states he has no power in his coach. We know that it's not the AC. We know that the shore power is good. Therefore, we know it's not his breaker panel. We know it's not a breaker. Um, if it was the break, if it was, if I did not have power here, a lot of places that I've seen an issue there is where the shore cord comes into the coach. Sometimes you'll have a junction box where the manufacturer had the, maybe it's, a, I see this mostly on 30 amp coaches, but I have found it on 50 as well, but mostly the 30 amp coaches where they have that big 10 gauge. Usually it's an orange Romex wire that feeds into the, 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 the panel and then works its way to where that shore cord connects to. Anyway, there's a junction box in that vicinity. And a lot of times I've seen that the junction box will have melted or there would have been a fault or a failure inside that junction box where the shore cord meets the Romex wire that's coming from the breaker panel. So if you do not have AC here, that would be the place I would look. Uh, obviously check your breakers and things like that, but that's the junction where the shore cord meets the, the, the RV power is at that junction box. Obviously that's not the point here because we have AC. So his problem is going to be more than likely the converter. That's the first place I'm going to look. Boom, done with that point. Converter, we talked about that. Where are they? Uh, sometimes, some of you, your converters are going to be integrated into that breaker panel. You'll have your breaker panel, then you'll have all your fuses, and then maybe on the bottom, you'll have this big silvery thing with fins on it. That's your converter. You'll see a fan and, and big wires, a big windy coil thing. Um, the converter and the battery charger are two totally separate appliances, but a lot of times they integrate them into one um, one case inside one case. Okay. Um, that's like at home, I have a, a microwave convection oven. It's an oven and a microwave built into one. Okay. We get our head wrapped around that. Um, the converter battery charger is two separate purposes in life, but they integrate them in together. The converter's job, like I said, convert AC to DC 120 to 12. And the battery's charger's job is to charge a battery. I've got another video on battery charging. You're going to, uh, all battery chargers are not the same. Let me make a little note here on the side. If you have water filled flooded batteries on your RV and you have the standard RV charger that came with your RV, a lot of times those are great for flooded batteries, but if you're going to upgrade your batteries to um, like these lithium or these spiral cell or sealed batteries or something like that, for whatever reason you want to do that, great. But if you're going to upgrade your batteries from something besides a flooded battery, you really need to also look at upgrading your battery charger as well. Okay. Um, the purpose for that is the chargers, converters that they have on these things are great for flooded batteries because they just charge your battery. Um, but if you're going to go with a, uh, a sealed battery or spiral cell or AGM or lithium, all these other kinds of batteries, the converter, the charger needs to know what it's got connected to it. Uh, the sealed batteries can't charge as fast because if you charge them with your existing charger, you're going to burn up your batteries. They need to charge much slower. Um, different algorithms. Okay. So just take a note. That's a takeaway that I want you to do for this. If you've upgraded your batteries to sealed because you don't like filling them with water, then you also need to upgrade your battery charger and let that battery charger know that it's got a sealed battery in it. Great. That's your takeaway from there. Where's your converter? A lot of times they're going to be in your panel, but if they're not in the panel, if you just open it up and you have your DC fuses and your AC breakers and there's no, no converter, um, you might need to go hunting. You might need to go looking for where this converter might be. A couple things that might help you find it. Um, sometimes they're tricky. Sometimes I've had to take 
quite a bit of interval of time to find these things. And um, they are supposed to be serviceable, so they're going to be behind a, a false wall. If you're on a fifth wheel, a lot of times they're like under the step. Uh, you know, you got to go into your, your basement area to get to it. Um, <clears throat> I've never seen a converter in a slide out. Okay, so that'll eliminate half of maybe some of your problems. If you've got a big slide out or a super slide or something like that, you're looking for your converter battery charger. You can eliminate it being in a, in a slide out. I've never found one in a slide out. That doesn't mean that a manufacturer won't put one there, but normally they're in the center core part of the coach. Uh, typically I've always found them. Um, uh, let me think here. I've never found them on an outside access panel. They're always in uh, accessible from inside. Um, inside could even be like through, uh, like on a, on a basement, um, fifth wheel through the basement. They're still inside. Uh, they should be between the, the breaker panel where all your B DC bus fuses are and the batteries. Um, according to the manufacturer, they like the converter closer to the battery than the panel box, but no one follows that. So if you can visualize where the breaker panel is and where your batteries are located, it's going to be somewhere between those two points. So if, if it, it, it's not going to be in the back, if your battery's in the front and the thing's in the middle. So you got to play detective and play Columbo like, hmm, I think it's okay. So those are some things. Sometimes you just got to hunt and peek and look. Now, where we found this one is this would be the breaker panel that I'm talking about. There's a screen right next to this and we got lucky. I don't know if you'll be able to see it. I don't know what's going to focus on, but right in there is the converter. So we're going to go access that. Yeah, it's focusing on the screen. Sorry about that. But anyway, the converter is back there. I can see it and the camera is just not cooperating with us. So let's gain access to that and we'll take our meter and see what we find. Now, um, I'm, I've taken this loose and we're gonna gain access to the converter. Stick you back in that hole. There, there it is in all of its glory. Okay, we do have very tight quarters in here because we uh, the slide room's in and we don't have a lot of room. So I'm gonna narrate what I'm doing. I'm gonna put my meter on DC volts. Well, the first thing I'm gonna do is put my meter on AC volts, okay? So I've got my meter on AC volts and right back here, the converter plugs in. Uh, so I'm just gonna lay myself down right here. <clears throat> so we talked about the converter battery charger being an appliance and here is the plug of it, okay? So we know that it's not shorted because had this been shorted, it would be tripping the breaker and the breaker is not tripped. Now, the first thing I wanna prove is do I have 120 volts feeding this plug? Okay, so that's the first thing I'm gonna do. I've got my meter on AC and we're gonna reach back up in here. I've got the meter on one side, or the, not the meter, but the lead from the meter. There we go. Okay, I have 120 volts. Okay, so I've just verified that had the converter been plugged in, that appliance is getting 120 volts, correct? All right? So I've just proven that. Now I'm going to go to DC on my meter. Okay, so, and I'm also going to plug in my converter. Let me get, let me get my light back up in here. I would love to be able to pull this thing out another inch or two. Okay, now I can see it. There we go. Okay, converter is plugged in. I did not trip a breaker. Therefore, the converter is not shorted out internally on the AC side. Okay, now I will check. My meter is in DC. There are two wires that are leaving the converter that go to my battery and I'm going to probe those, they are at zero. Now, on the back of the converter, I have three fuses. So I'm gonna put my meter into continuity beep mode, touch the meter, got a beep. Let me make sure that's zero. Okay, so it's actually two. I'm getting two ohms of resistance. So when you do this to your meter and you're not getting zero, it's an indication your leads are, are starting to fail. Either your leads are going bad or, where they connect to is bad. So um, that, and you wanna make sure that your meter is always, there we go. I didn't have them plugged in complete. So now I'm getting zero on my meter, okay. So I'm going to check my fuses in place. This is gonna be a trick. 
Well, I need a second hand. This is where Dakota is so perfect. I like having them on the job sites. So I'm gonna take my light and stick it right there. Perfect. Well, the life of an RV technician in these tight spots. Okay. Now, so I'll tell you what, I wanted to check the fuses in place, but I just, let me, I'm just gonna pull them out. Let's do that. Okay, I'll do one at a time. Okay. So there's a, that's a fuse. It's a 25 amp fuse. That fuse is good. Now the reason their fuses might blow, that fuse is good also. And that fuse is good also. So here's what we got folks. We got a bad converter. That's really as far as I take the troubleshooting on these. If I'm feeding the converter 120 volts, as an appliance and it's not giving me 12 and the fuses on board that converter are not blown then it's going to be the converter overwhelmingly i don't know that it's ever not been okay um i don't think it's a wiring problem and if it was a wiring problem then when i plugged into my when i plug my appliance into my box here then i would have tripped a breaker wouldn't i have okay i would have had a, a, a short to ground or a short to phase I don't think it's the wires going to the batteries. The reason I don't think it's wires going to the batteries because that's what these fuses are protecting. If the wires going to the batteries were shorted or any in anything like that, those fuses would have blown and they're not they're, they're in perfect shape. So there's something internal to that converter that has failed. Um, I have seen, I've replaced a lot of converters and it's because they got plugged into shore power and there's these MOVs inside of the converter and those things are the ones that take the hit. So if you plug into dirty power, your converter might be one of the things that is that has faulted or failed. So with that, let's go put a new converter in, okay? And I wanna find an easier way to get into that. I don't wanna have to pull the stove and uh, I'm gonna poke around. If I have to go through this hole, I will, but um, I might need to give myself a little bit more slack here. So now we're done with the diagnosis. I'm gonna call it that it's the converter. If I've got 120 coming in and DC's not coming out and there's no blown fuses, there's not much else. A lot of these converters are riveted closed, so there's no serviceable, bleh, no serviceable parts on the inside. That hasn't stopped me. I've still gone in. and. Um, but as a RV tech, my business does not want to take the liability of um, popping those rivets, fixing it, and putting it back inside the customer's coach um, because there's liability issue there. So, um, But if this was my personal coach, eh, and I'm out of warranty, I might try to fix it because I do a lot of that on my own. But... The business, Darren, is not going to do that because of liability issues. So let me pause for a second and let me try to gain access to this and we'll put a new converter in. Okay, hope this is helping you guys. I've looked down below at gaining access to that converter and it's it's just going to be a whole lot easier to pull this stove than it is to try to gain access to that. Uh, that service panel, what they've done is they've got the Romex wire, the big orange one I was talking about a little earlier, um, short. So I don't have a lot of room. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna pull the stove. So what I've done is I've already turned off the LP on the front and um, it's like six screws, so it's no big deal. And uh, that looks bigger, maybe a 13. Yeah, okay, and then that looks like a maybe a 5 eighths. Let's see if we play the lottery today. Hey, 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 it's almost like I did this before. We're always gonna use a backup wrench on our propane. Whenever you crack open the propane line, you always need to do a sniff test with a sniffer or a leak test. So we got our propane disconnected here. You'll smell a little bit of ethyl mercaptan. Four screws on the top. I'm gonna stick those. Oh, he's got a magnetic tray, that's his. So four screws here. And usually they have two down here. Let's take a look. Yep, they do. Okay. One right there. And one right here. Now that should be it. It might be a little sneaker sleeper screw, but basically that's usually all that's involved in holding these things in. Yeah, okay. And there we go. Let's turn him. 
So six screws is all it takes to mount your stove. Okay. So here's our converter. And uh, this, I'm glad I pulled the stove because now I can really get in here. Um, so this is the wire that was connected to our appliance, right? Because we're treating it like an appliance. Well, that's interesting. This is a unfinished coax wire. So you'll find all kinds of things. Here's another unfinished coax wire. So I have two unfinished coax wires. I never put the ends on them. So uh, that's interesting. Maybe add that. And um, so when I check, where's my meter? When I check these two wires, the battery is dead, stone dead. Um, the reason why the battery is stone dead is because the, the, the converter died and the battery has been running the show so it is zero, nothing, okay. Let me bring my tool bag down here. Like I've said it three times now, but it's very tight quarters in here. So that is adding a little bit to the challenge of getting the job done. That's an Allen key, okay. So we're gonna loosen that, there we go. And this one. So this is really simple, guys. Um, we're just gonna take the old converter out, put the new converter in, make sure it's got the ground, and uh, test everything. So um, that's really what we're gonna do. Even though the battery's dead, I don't want these touching anybody. I want them to behave themselves. One thing I'm going to do is um, all my connections are in the front here and my fuses are in the front. My ground lug is um, here on the front, but here's my ground wire and he's not long enough to reach. So he's connected with a Phillips screw. The whole case is metal. So I'm going to move him to the back right there, to that hole. Okay, makes sense? So that's what I'm gonna do next. Now, the fun part of this is I just now noticed that he's got a star washer on the back. So this one, I'm gonna take these screws off. I'm gonna, I need to move this lug to the back. Okay, so let me do that real quick. So that when you pick me up, the lug's gonna be on the back side. Okay. I've moved the lug to the back corner back here. Inside there's a star washer and a star washer here to make sure there's a good bonding to the frame. Ground is very important because if something should happen to this, ground's gonna be the thing that saves the day. Uh, if this thing goes sideways on us or something, ground's gonna be the saver. We've got our, um, these go to the battery and then I'm plugged in. So here's a moment of truth, okay? The last time we did our test, we were connected to shore power. We basically were, were feeding our appliance, if you will. And um, we got nothing coming out on the battery feed wires, if you will. And uh, these are the fuses, okay? So let's see here. Uh, meter is in DC mode. And I don't know if you are, I'm not plugged in. Okay, it's time to get new leads. I can just tell this meter gets a lot of use uh, almost daily. So we're gonna reach in there. 
There, I got 13.5, 13.6 volts DC, yay. And we are gonna look up here, let's see, output voltage 13.4. So we're totally within spec. Um, so at this point, the we're, we're, we're converting, okay? 120 to 12, which 13.6, okay? So that's good. Now I don't really, I could run a light. Let's see if some lights work. Let's, let's, let's just reach up here. Uh, there we go. Okay, that's the light for the stove right above us. And uh, so that didn't work before, so that works. And uh, I'm gonna assume that a lot of other things are gonna work as well. Um, I don't, at this point, want to um, run the slide room out. If the battery was totally dead, I want that battery to charge for an hour or two uh, to build up the charge to run the slide room out. If your converter, if, if your batteries were dead, if, if the opposite was the case, if the batteries were dead, um, then it's the converter that's taken all the hit to run your slide room out, those motors and things. And it's also the converter that's taken the hit if you're gonna start your furnace. So it's better to let your converter battery charger charge your battery and let the battery take the hit, which it's, it, it's can more than capable of doing, um, to run your slide room motors and run your furnace motors and all those types of things. So I don't wanna do the slide room at this point because that's all coming out of the converter because the battery's dead. Since the battery was dead, it's good to go check that battery, maybe even loosen the tops on it because if it was dead, charging it is gonna generate a lot of heat. And we wanna make sure that that battery can vent, okay? Um, so let's put the stove back in and button everything up. How many of you knew how easy it was to pull a stove. It really is easy. There we go. There we go. Okay, four screws on the top, two on the bottom. So I'm gonna button this up. Hi guys, I don't know if you see me. I'm gonna button this up and um, have a chat with a customer, let them know what happened. And um, yeah, so if this was helpful, um, give me a thumb up, subscribe, and um, share it with your friends. And uh, happy camper, St. Mary Work. So this is Darren from Carlsborg, Washington, signing off until the next video. And uh, I think we have a happy camper. Okay, bye guys.